Hi everyone, this is Richard. In this video, we are going to go over constructors. Now, if you remember in the last video, we already said that every class has built in within it its inherent constructor. But with Dart, we don't need to accept the default constructor. We can create our own. And this is what we called a named constructor. I've also seen it written as a generative constructor. Okay, so let's get to it. So class, I'm gonna make a calculator. Do you remember in times past, um, in a long video ago, we talked about making a basic calculator and it was kind of lame, but at least we could do it. This is going to be a little bit less lame. Not, not lame, just less lame, okay? So class calculator, in order to make a constructor, you create a method that basically has the same name as the class itself. And that is your constructor. So you, when you call the constructor, you are calling this method, which is what we use to create an instance of the object. I'm sorry, instance of the class or an object. Okay, so it just has the same name as the class in and of itself. Now, the nice thing here is we could put in parameters. So let's just put um, uh, uh, x and y. And here we could put 5 and 8. Okay, so we, we can now introduce bef um, where we didn't before into this new object instance, we can introduce arguments themselves. But what if you want to do something like this? Um, print a, I'm, I'm sorry, x plus y. And you want to do a subtract. Let's do a single line function, okay? Print x minus y. Okay, so remember, fat arrow is the same thing as curly brackets. Now, we're already noticing a problem here, okay? X and Y, both values undefined. Why? Remember lexical scope. You introduce these arguments, they become parameters, and as soon as you get out of the brackets, brackets they get deleted, right? So what do we do? Outside of that scope, we introduce X and integer y, okay? But now we have a different problem. Now, the variable, we're, we're con having conflicting names, okay? When there's a naming conflict. Is the x here the same thing as the x here? The answer is no, right? Because this is an integer. This is a um, instance variable, which is a member of the class. And then you have a parameter, right? So is the x um, a, a variable? Or is it a parameter? Um, here, well, or or both, of course. But but this particular one comes from right here. So so this value is going to be null, even though we put it there, right? Um, there's no error because you still get null. But before when we comment, if we comment this out, they are undefined because they have not been declared at all. Here we're declaring it. It just doesn't have a valid a valid value. So. What many people do is this dot x equals x, this dot y equals. So what what does this actually mean? When you say this dot x, what it's basically saying is x right here, the parameter is the same thing here. I don't know if you can actually see it, but when I highlight it, this gets highlighted as well. When I highlight this, this gets highlighted as well. That's the Dart editor just basically helping you out. What this dot x means is that this refers to a local variable. Dot x refers to the actual name of the variable. So in other words, what it's saying is this dot x equals x. This dot y equals y. Okay, so remember lexical scope. Here's a naming conflict. You have to get the local variables to equal the parameters themselves because of a, of a naming problem itself, right? What if we used here, it's Q and W. Here it would be Q, W. There would be no naming conflict. You don't need to put this.x. You just put X. That's all you need to do, right? But because we're putting X here and Y, because there is a naming conflict, x 
and y. You can't do this because it doesn't know which x you're referring to. For all it knows is that this x is here, is here. It's a statement. Oops, I'm going to give you something, some type of error. So this dot x, this dot y. Um, the nice thing, and you can do this with any of the variables, any of the, um, what, what should I say, um, methods here. Let's just y, say y, z. If you're going to say z, you're going to have to write this dot x, um, z equals z. Okay. This z, this z dot x z equals this z right here. So this variable has the value of this parameter from now on. So if we create that, we can say a dot a is the object we just created, right? It's the instance of the class dot add three, and what it'll do, it'll print x plus y, which should get you 13. Okay? Um, or you can do the subtract method. But there, you have no parameter, therefore no argument, and it's going to give you some problem. What was the problem? Print x minus y a dot subtract oh, you actually have to spell it correctly. Minus three, okay. Um, remember, with Dart though, we do have um, syntactic sugar, so it's easier to do because this is a common thing you'll see. This dot x equals x. This dot y equals y. What Dart creators basically said is, most whenever you're going to do this, to make it easier, just put this dot x here, this dot y. So what you're basically telling the um, Dart editor and the virtual machine is that. In this particular circumstances, when you're talking about a um, named constructor, when you write this dot x, you automatically know that this variable, this argument, and this parameter is equal to this integer. So it will be the same thing. And why do we do this? It's easier to read. That's why, and that's a pretty good reason. It's easier to read. It's easier to do instead of writing this dot x equals x, this dot y equals y all the time. Okay. We'll delete this. Oh, but here, that's only doable in a in the constructor itself. In any other method, you can't do this dot z. Okay. Whoops. It'll give you an error. Um, field initializers can only be used in a constructor, so you can still do this dot z equals z. You could still do that. You just can't put this dot z here itself. That's just for the constructor. That's just the way it is. Okay. So I think that's pretty clear. Let's see if we got our calculator up correctly. Subtract, multiply, print um, x times y, divide, x divided by y. So now we have a calculator that we can do anything we want to. Subtract, divide. It's a little bit, I guess, less lame from our previous one, because previous one we just had to do all of them or nothing. Add, subtract, multiply, divide. So we could change the variable names right here. Or values, I'm sorry. We could change the variable values. If you really want to make it super easy to do, you could say int, um, let's just say x equals 4, int y equals 44, and put x, y. You can always do that, okay? So, and you could change the variables right here as we go by. And that's how you can make your calculator. Okay, so simple class calculator that does multiple, has multiple methods in it. Um, single line 
um, methods or functions, standard syntax for the function, this.x, this refers to the local variable as opposed to regular x when you, it refers to the parameter argument slash argument up here. Sorry, yeah, argument up here, parameter down here. Okay, so I hope that was helpful. Um, this will just be helpful for you to get the introduce when you have a new constructor like this, a named constructor, introduce these values, um, the uh, arguments, um, sooner rather than later in there. You don't have to use these, of course. You could have always just done um, a, a setter method, a dot x equals 433, right? You could have done that. You could do that as well, but this just simplifies the, the, the procedure and the process altogether. Okay, thank you very much.